Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Over the next few weeks, many of us will be visiting family and friends and possibly attending holiday or New Year's parties. So today I wanted to share some inexpensive and easy ideas for creating unique hostess gifts. But maybe you're like me and you're hosting people in your home. Well, I have ideas for you too. I came up with some fun table setting ideas using only things that I already had around the house. I hope you'll stick around until the end of the video because I have an announcement to make that I don't want you to miss. Well, enough talking. Let's get started. For this first project, you'll need an inexpensive plate or platter. I created a vinyl decal using my Cricut, but if you don't have a cutting machine, you could write out a phrase using a paint pen. Apply a coat of dishwasher safe Mod Podge to the entire platter. Then choose an unusual container to hold some toothpicks. I'm using a sleigh ornament from Dollar Tree. I cut off the ring used for hanging so that it wouldn't look like an ornament. Then I added a package of toothpicks. I decided to add a small piece of styrofoam to the front of the sleigh so that the toothpicks would stand up straight. You could easily adapt this idea to other holidays and occasions. For example, for New Year's, you could put the toothpicks in a small champagne glass. And for Valentine's, you could put the toothpicks in a heart-shaped container. Here's an idea for turning the Dollar Tree cloche into an expensive looking gift. Attach a knob to the top of the cloche using E6000 jewelry and bead glue. I used the lid off of an old cologne bottle and covered up the brand name with sequin ribbon. I found a candle stand in my stash that was the right size for the cloche, and then I glued sequin ribbon to it too. A viewer recommended that I try the jewelry and bead glue, and I really like it better than the regular E6000 because it's very sticky and so things stay put until the glue is completely dry. To give this cloche as a gift, you could put a stack of homemade cookies or candy under it, or you could put a candle inside. Here is a fun, easy way to dress up a simple votive candle to present as a gift. Cut the petals off of a large fake flower, and then if you like, dress up the petals by applying hot glue to the edges and pressing the petals into glitter. Paint a small wood base in a color to coordinate with your flower. I used a Dollar Tree star ornament because that's what I had on hand. Apply hot glue to the center of the back of each petal and reassemble the flower by gluing it to the wood base. Glue the small inner parts of the flower to the side of a glass votive candle holder or a recycled yogurt jar. I also applied some Mod Podge along the bottom of the jar and then sprinkled on some iridescent glitter. To attach the jar to the wood base and the flower, I applied hot glue in the center and the E6000 jewelry glue along the outer edge of the bottom of the jar. Add a battery operated or real votive candle inside the jar and you're done. I think this turned out so pretty and I love that I was able to make use of things that I already had on hand. Calendars are always a good gift this time of year and so I thought I would turn this Dollar Tree Perpetual Calendar into something a little more special. I found a birdhouse in my stash that I had previously painted white. I cut off the bird perch and sanded it smooth, and then I flipped the birdhouse over and traced around the calendar box. 
I drilled holes in the inside corners of the rectangle so that it would be easier to cut out that piece of wood with my jigsaw. Then I hot glued the calendar box inside the hole that I had cut. I went around the edges with some wood filler to fill in the gaps. To create a stand for the birdhouse, I marked the center of a wood base, and then I took an old spindle that I had and super glued it to the base and to the birdhouse. When the wood filler was dry, I sanded it smooth, and then I painted the birdhouse and the stand with a couple coats of white chalk paint. I drilled two small holes above the calendar and attached a small bell with florist wire by running the wire through the holes and then tightening it from the back. I also drilled a couple small holes in the wood base and then hot glued some greenery into those holes. I also hot glued a bird and some Spanish moss to the roof of the birdhouse. You can embellish your birdhouse however you like. I chose not to make mine look too wintry because this is something that would be sitting out year round. I already had the Dollar Tree perpetual calendar in my stash, but with the new year just around the corner, surely Dollar Tree will have them in stock in the next few weeks. It's fairly easy to find like new books at the thrift store to give as gifts. To create a fun bookmark for your book, sew or glue a long skinny strip of fabric into a tube. Turn it right side out and then pull some threads from either end to create some fringe. Use it just like that or if you want, Fold it over and hot glue on a button for extra embellishment. By the way, if you have never read the book, If You're Missing Baby Jesus, it is one of my all-time favorite Christmas stories. It is so sweet and a true story, too. To create this unique photo or card holder, you'll need a plastic animal figurine or Christmas ornament. Punch or drill a hole in the top of the animal. Then add a little glue to a metal photo card clip and insert it into the hole. You can buy a bag of metal clips at Hobby Lobby or Amazon or repurpose one from Dollar Tree. Use hot glue or E6000 to adhere your animal to a wood round. If you want, you can embellish your animal like I did with a little scarf. A fun idea for using this as a gift is to insert the recipient's own Christmas card into the clip. I love this next gift idea, even if Christmas is over. Drive by and take a photo of the recipient's house and then print it out in a size to fit a wood round. Drill a hole in the wood round for hanging purposes and then decoupage the image to the wood round by applying Mod Podge to the round and to the back of the image. You may want to use a brayer to smooth out any wrinkles. When the Mod Podge is dry, cut off the excess paper and then smooth the edges with a sanding block. Punch through the paper where you drilled a hole for hanging and then apply a top coat of Mod Podge. Add a loop of ribbon or twine through the hole. Personalize the ornament even more by uploading the photo into a Word document or the Canva app so that you can add a date or a name. A similar idea is to cut the recipient's hometown or former hometown from a map and then decoupage that section of the map to a wood round. I used a star shape because that's what I had on hand, but a heart shape would be fun too. I actually forgot to paint the star before I applied the map, so I painted it while the Mod Podge was drying and it worked out fine. 
When the Mod Podge was dry, I cut off the excess paper, smoothed the edges with a sanding block, and then, using a paint pen, I put a heart around the name of the hometown. Then I applied the top coat of Mod Podge. I actually made my ornament two-sided. One side features the recipient's hometown, and the other side features her current town. If you frequently give gifts that come in glass bottles or jars, this next idea is for you. Pick up a container at the thrift store large enough to hold two bottles. I painted mine white and distressed it with a sanding block. I also painted and distressed a recycled tin can, and then I inserted some styrofoam. I added some Christmas greenery, but you could add whatever plants or flowers that you like. You could even use a real plant. To cover the styrofoam, I brushed on a little Mod Podge and then spread some fake snow inside the can. I also added some fake snow to the greenery with spray adhesive. I also designed this little label, which I printed out in a size to fit the can and attached it with Mod Podge. I glued a ribbon around the top of the can and then tied a coordinating ribbon and a small Christmas ornament to my bottle. I think this is such a cute idea if you are gifting anything that comes in a bottle. Wine, champagne, olive oil, even your favorite barbecue sauce. Here's another fun idea for dressing up bottles. Cut the sleeve off of an old sweater. My sleeve was a little too wide for my bottle, so I cut some of the fabric off and then glued the edges back together. Turn the sleeve right side out. Run a basting stitch around the top of the sweater using thread or florist wire so that you can easily gather the fabric together. Once the thread or wire is pulled taut, use hot glue to attach a small scarf, like the one we made as a bookmark. Once the scarf is glued around the top about three-fourths of the way around, pull out the thread or wire. Then tie the scarf to secure it around the bottle. Although I think it's cute, if I were to make this again, I would use a smaller sized sweater. If you don't have a sweater on hand, you could create a small pouch using a scrap of fabric. Fold the top edge over and sew or glue in place. Then sew up the side seam to create a tube. Fold the extra fabric over the bottom of the bottle. Fold it as if you were wrapping a present. Use hot glue to attach fabric to fabric. Make sure that you don't glue the fabric to the bottom of the bottle. Cut two small slits at the top of the bag on either side of the seam, and then run yarn or twine through it using a safety pin. Now you can tighten the twine to gather up the top of the pouch around your bottle. You can also glue on a little embellishment if you want. I really like the pouch idea for mason jars or other smaller containers, perhaps a jar of homemade jam or jelly. Okay, just one more idea for decorating bottles. Cut a long rectangle from a piece of fake fur. Fold it over on itself with the wrong sides together and then glue the long edges together. Turn it right side out. Fold in the ends and hot glue them in place. Wrap it around your bottle like a fur stole and then glue the two ends together. Add any adornments that you would like. I used a jingle bell. If you want to take it a step further, you could create a hat by creating a little tube of fake fur around the top of the bottle. Just make sure that you're hot gluing fabric to fabric and not to the bottle because you do want the hat to be removable. 
I think this would be extra special if you had an old brooch to use in place of the jingle bell. Now for some festive place setting ideas using things that you may already have around the house. Using sticks from your yard, cut the sticks into three and a half inch long segments. Cut or sand off any small branches or bumps. Then hot glue two of your small sticks together. Also hot glue on a little fake greenery or florals. Print out names on cardstock, and now you have unique place card holders. To create a simple centerpiece, scrunch up some plastic bags in the bottom of a basket that you already own. Add a strand of fairy lights, and then add pine cones, sticks, berries, whatever you happen to have in your yard. To add texture and color to an all-white place setting, sandwich a wicker paper plate holder in between your dinner plate and your salad plate. Fold your napkin and place it under the salad plate. Add a sprig of greenery from your yard and then put the place card holder on top of the salad plate. Oh, and don't forget to turn on your fairy lights for extra ambiance. To create a winter-themed place setting, cut up an old or thrifted scarf into several long strips. Mine were about 15 inches long and 4 inches wide. Then take those Dollar Tree metal words that come three to a package and spray paint them in a color to coordinate with your scarf. I used the words from a Christmas package and the word love left over from a Valentine's package. For this place setting, I added a little pine cone on the wicker plate and a little wood round on top of the salad plate. You can place your napkin on the side or you could use the scarf as your napkin. You can also add color and texture to an all white place setting by using placemats. These green ones are from Dollar Tree. I topped these place settings with a bowl and then I added some greenery, a pine cone and an ornament to each bowl. I also created place cards which I tied to each ornament with some ribbon. For the next place setting, I kept the centerpiece very simple with some brass candlesticks. I also printed out some vintage Christmas carols. I draped my napkin over a single dinner plate and placed the printed Christmas carol on top of that. I tied the silverware together using some simple gold ribbon and added a little greenery and a pine cone for embellishment. I think this is a simple but elegant look. For the last place setting, I wanted to use my blue and white dishes. I printed out a Bible verse to include with each place setting, but I like the idea of printing out different verses for each place setting and having that family member read their verse or verses to tell the complete Christmas story before beginning dinner. I also added some animals from old nativity sets next to the Bible verse inside the salad bowl. Well, I hope today's ideas were helpful to you in some small way. Now I'd like to talk about next week's video. Since it will be my last video of 2021, I wanted to do something special. And so instead of doing crafts, I am going to do my first ever Q&A. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and answer your most frequently asked questions. The video will also be a premiere, which means there will be a live chat throughout the video. And so that more people can participate in the live chat, I won't be releasing it at the usual time, but instead I'll be releasing it Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time.
If you're subscribed to my channel with notifications turned on, YouTube will send you a reminder. And if you can't watch it live, no worries. You can still watch it at a later time. You just won't be able to participate in the live chat. With all that said, please leave me a comment in the comment section today and let me know what things you would like me to talk about next week. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Bye-bye for now.